Hello and welcome to the National Museum of Computing's online Q&A. As you may be aware, we've been uh, asking you, the public, to come to us with your questions over the last week or so. And we've got some really good ones coming in. Of course, we want more, so submit them as we move along in, in our uh, video Q&As. Um, the BBC Micro. Dads, you have uh, questions about your BBC Micro. Kids, you want to know why Dad goes on about his BBC Micro. Um, we had a couple of interesting tweets from women, of course. Don't forget that women, uh, girls use the BBC Micro as well. Um, the BBC Micro, uh, personal computer, for those people who don't know much about it. Um, it appeared at the dawn of the PC revolution during the 1980s. Um, if you went into a school classroom, the chances are that one of the few, there were hardly any computers. Um, and if there was, it was quite possibly a BBC Micro. Why were boys and girls in the 1980s, why do men and women now to this day still remember the BBC Micro. What did it do? What did it contribute? What was its significance? And I guess, and I guess the big question is, whatever happened to it? Um, Peter, I think you might have some, some thoughts on that. I just wanted to say that, um, picking up the uh, women in computing theme that you touched on there, that it's important to note that one of the co-designers of the BBC Micro was Sophie Wilson. So I'll just leave that for on the mm. table for now. Do you have any thoughts on, on why, you know, the significance of the BBC Micro uh, and, and her work? Well, it, it's, a, it's a hugely flexible machine. Um, yeah, it, it's, I mean, it's a microcomputer. It's uh, it, out of the box. It comes in 32K of RAM, which by modern day standards is pathetic. Um, it's a reasonably quick processor. It's a, a, a 6502 processor in the original form. Uh, but it's so expandable, it was designed to be expanded, it was designed to be used with coprocessors, so you could you could um, have a coprocessor Z80, for, for example, sitting alongside it. Um, it. It was expandable to add on peripherals, if you could afford them, um, because they weren't cheap. I think one of the, well, I've got a slightly sort of, um, j not jaded view, it's not the right word, but the, my view about the mic BBC Micro is it was just a little too expensive for the time that it was launched. So the basic machine was £399 yeah. from memory. And if you wanted a decent monitor and not have to use your television set, you were into another £199 to stick a decent display on it. That's a serious outlay for anybody, um, not, notwithstanding schools, because um, as a, an educational tool, um, at that kind of price, a precious few schools will be able to afford more than two or three of them, yeah. um, or, or, or any at all for that matter. So, um, but, but it's... Um, it's a hugely popular machine. I mean, we, we, we demonstrate the flexibility of it when we, um, when we have educational groups in. We get them to write a program. It's 20 lines of code written in BASIC, BBC BASIC. And you create a very, very playable game. Yeah. Uh, the game of Snake, which anybody who's got a Nokia phone will, will, will probably be hooked on. Um, now, this, this, this illustrates, the way I like to put it is, for the kids who are doing it, well, it's a fairly basic um, program, program and a fairly basic game. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it was, if you'd knocked that out in the early 1980s, you might have been able to make some serious pocket money out selling that to your friends. Mm -hmm. um, and it was that easy to work with. So you could work with it both at the high level, but you could also, through the basic, uh, the, actually the BBC basic interface, you could actually get access to the machine at the assembly level as well. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just a flexibility of the thing built in right from the, Right from the get-go, really, that that uh, stood it apart. It's it was it was a substantial machine. It would stand up to some serious abuse. The keyboard is pretty darn robust. You know, we've got quite a lot of them in the museum. We let kids let loose on those on a, on a daily basis, and they survive, which is um, mighty surprising. Some of our um, our sponsors help us with the with the refurbishment. If they survive up to a point, and sooner or later they have to be mended. So. Shout out to Agilitas, I think, for, for their efforts in. Do you in think is it fair to call it? Sorry, say again. Is it fair to call it the, the, the first computer in in schools, in British schools at least? Do you think or not? I couldn't I couldn't tell you what was the first because um, I think the uh, the Elliot nine hundred three that Ollie had at school probably predated that. Right. Um, <laughs> But it definitely that, has, that, was that mental so mind lock. I mean, it's the one we had in our school. We had a school of thousands. We had a school of thousands and we had three three computers and they were all BBC micros. So you can imagine the ratio of usage to the computer exactly. to kids. And you compare and contrast that to the situation today where, where laptops are by, uh, abound in schools uh, that are all over. 
Um, the, whereas yeah. at school, typically you might have, what, like you said, one or two of those to share for the whole 600 roll or something like that. So, um, but uh, it, it, if it had been made cheaper, um, then um, who knows? So we, we may have got a, um, a, a population of programmers a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot earlier than uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the other outfits that, that, that invested more heavily in getting yeah. into schools. And what was the scheme of the BBC getting involved? I mean, they don't they don't make computers, so who made it? And and why was the BBC's name all over it? Well, it's made by Acorn Computers in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. well, they went on the great things because they went on to form ARM, uh, which originally was Acorn yeah. Risk Machines. And when Acorn was sold to Olivetti and then went into oblivion, um, ARM was then floated off uh, as advanced risk machines, which is a pretty nifty way of doing it. They didn't have to change their letterhead because they still had ARM. So there's economy for you. Um, and so, I mean, they carried on their pioneering, uh, their pioneering work into a completely different dimension. And formed the BBC a got involved for some reason, didn't they? Sorry? The BBC became involved, helped promote it. Well, the then. BBC, yeah, the BBC was, 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 was in, the, in the initiative, the Computer Literacy uh, Project. The OWL logo on the BBC uh, yeah. products became uh, ubiquitous. Remember it well. They were able to, to of course, put the um, uh, the coverage out on, on TV um, to to uh, to show the evolution of, of um, uh, the computing. Ian McNaught Davis and people like that who uh, who kind of came to fame in the public eye on the back of the BBC's computer literacy literacy project and the programmes they put out.